welcome to the Meeple Mentor YouTube channel. I'm Jared. Today we're doing an unboxing of Obsession, Pride, Intrigue, and Prejudice in Victorian England. We've got the base game, we've got the Wessex, Wessex expansion, we have upstairs, downstairs, an, exp an expansion as well, and the promotional tiles uh, that came with the Kickstarter campaign. We're going to take a look here and uh, open everything one by one together and uh, yeah, this is going to be a fun unboxing. I've, I've not played the game, but I have looked into it with, you know, the rules and a lot of the, um, you know, kind of the theme and everything. Uh, so I can I can kind of get a good idea for what's going on with everything here. But I think we're going to start first with some of these expansions and then get into the base game. So let me set this aside first. All right. And then maybe we'll do the promotional tiles first. We've got... The Kickstarter campaign from 2019, stretch goal backers would get to design two promotional improvement tiles. And uh, let's see, creative fanciful tiles, bend the rules, exploring themes, blah, blah, blah. All right, we're going to carefully open this up here with my little device, hopefully. Hmm, because I don't want to harm the tiles. Might have to, all right, maybe I got it. Maybe I got it. Here we go. Perfect. So we have the unique rules. We have some description here. And we have the tiles themselves. So of course these are double-sided. We've got Alderley Hall, the Costume Ball, Art Gallery, North Tower, East Lawn, Ornamental Hermitage, Garden Observatory, and that's what they look like here on the back. The Village Fair Stall, Summer House, East End Haha, -ha, Manor Aviary, Private Family Chapel, Grand Ballroom, and here's the back of that. Music Room, Walled Garden, Still Room, Laundry, Ice House, Horse Carriage. Okay, so that's the promo tiles, which I'm going to now set aside. And we'll look at the Wessex expansion, the deluxe second printing. Includes two new improvement tiles, Morning Room and Retiring Room. Of course, it does require the base game. Here we go. Okay. The greatest mistake any man ever made is suppose that the good things of the world are not worth the winning. Quoted by Anthony Trollope. This is basically a very thematic... Euro game. Um, it's not a kind of game that you know necessarily the best player always wins. Um, it's it's very kind of based on how everything kind of turns out. It's it's confusing, um, but it's 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 going to be fun. I think this is an extra fifth player, second edition player board. Let's see, two sided boards. Okay, we have our story. We have some explanation here of some of the new cards, rules for the family Wessex, and then the new rooms, and extended solo play. And here's some of the tiles, the breakfast room, the tennis court, morning room, two of them, and the retiring room, two of them. And here's the other side of that. This is the double-sided board here. Colors here on the bottom to be able to put the tiles that go below. And then here we've got some new cards to look at. All right. Victorian England. Okay. Got some of these. Charles Beckton. Sir Kenneth Crawley. Lady Anne Austen. I'm curious where they get all the uh, the pictures of the older people in the game. Uh, like if they're taken from actual, you know, books or various publications. I don't know. They certainly look authentic, but then again, they could just be, you know, artwork, drawings, and that sort of thing. Okay. And we got, I believe these are for the solo mode extended stuff. So here you go. Beginner, intermediate, expert. All right. Cards are nice. They feel really good, actually. 
like very good quality, very sleek, a nice finish to them. Very cool. And set all this aside. And we'll move into the main expansion, the big one, upstairs, downstairs. Let's see. Supplies gamers with new options for mitigating your fate, but true to the game's spirit, the mechanics are intertwined with the theme. Specifically in the unique abilities of new domestics. The cook, hall boy, head and housemaid, useful man. Hmm. Cool. Includes promotional cards, milestone cards. Monuments. Okay. Let's open it up and take a look here. In the main box. The boxes are also really sturdy. Really nice, really nice thick boxes, I gotta say. We have a uh, kind of a nylon cloth Upstairs, downstairs bag. I got some wooden components to look at. Look at some of the new meeples added to the game. Aha. I'll take one of each here and kind of pull it up so you guys can see. Here, close up. There's that. I know one of them's like the headmistress, and one's the servant, worker, all these kind of people. Let's see, we got blue, white. There you go. These are pretty big wooden pieces. Um, they are uniquely shaped, as you can see. Um, I think these orange ones, I think, are new to this expansion. I don't recognize these from some of the content I've seen before. There you go. There's the orange dude. I'm not sure what the name of them are. Here's the blue man. There's a lot of packaging here. These are all high quality, very good components. These are all wooden Painted pieces, naturally. There's like, what, maybe construction worker. Something like that. And lastly, some pink dudes. Alright. Check that out. There's a lot of custom workers in this game. They all have their own kind of abilities and purposes and that sort of thing. I'm going to go ahead and just drop all of them in this bag for now and I'll worry about sorting them later. Um, there's also these, you know, octagon type little wooden pieces as well for tracking various things. Okay, let's put that in a bag. We have some cards. I would venture to say these are promotional ones from the useful box. So if you're looking for the promos for the useful box, this is those. So as you can see, these would get mixed in with the level two and level one cards. I'll try to just kind of go through them if you want to watch it in slow motion and pause when you want to read a specific card. I think that's the best way to go about being able to see and show off all these cards to you guys. And you can note that the cards in uh, the bottom left tell you which kind of worker need to be, you know, attentive to that guest to serve them and therefore activate their stat abilities and actions. So, what do we have here? We have some more solo cards, milestone cards, upstairs, downstairs. Cards, milestones, and your standard. So here's the solo ones. So I'm not sure yet if the solo mode is added from the expansions or if it came in the base game, but we 
are going to find out soon enough. Here's some more of the new, the new cards here that you can add into the game. If you've not played Obsession, essentially your goal is to, you know, uh, operate your manor house, inviting guests and raising your reputation amongst the families of the era, and ultimately win over the hearts of um, the male and female head, like people, like you're you're courting these people, um, but you need to have a high enough reputation and status. Um, you hire servants and other people. Yeah, that's the best I can give you right now. Milestones, stuff that you can earn, having various things here at the top right, let you claim the points shown first and second for claiming milestones. Let's put those here. And here, then we got some more uh, smaller cards, victory point cards, objective cards. Now, if I recall, the victory point cards tend to have either victory points on them that you can keep and, you know, score at the end of the game, or like abilities that you'll be able to use if you turn them in. And so let's take a look. We've got, well, these here at the bottom don't say victory point. These must be unique. These have just like people on them, and you've got. Essentials, service, estate, prestige, and sporting. So just different cards, kind of like Tricurian, kind of maybe it's like planning out where you're going to send servants. And then these are the victory points. So you can keep the points for the end of the game or, you know, use the card for the ability, which is a really cool mechanism, I think, because then you know how much that action is worth if you do it, you know, obviously. It's like, well, I could get 200 pounds, or I can, you know, keep it for three points. Um, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And I'll set that aside. And then we'll take a look at the objective cards. And I believe these are uh, two are dealt, something like that, at the beginning of the game to each player. And then it gives you something to work towards. Like this, finish the game with all four upstairs, downstairs servants. Uh, Sporting bonus, one point per sporting tile, service tile, essentials, servant bonus, 13 or more servants. You get five points, stuff like that. So various objectives here to take a look through. A lot of different options, a lot of specializations that you can go for during the game. Spending your money on servants and tiles and all that sort of stuff. So more objectives probably specifically relating to this expansion. We've got uh, more score pads here. They're double-sided and um, very nice. Very nice quality looking. I like the background. We've got promotional cards, unique rules, a uh, little overview here. We've got a rule book and a component list. <clears throat> And this is a developer note to stop and make sure you play Obsession before adding the new servants and the complexity of the game expansion stuff. So it's like, you know, maybe uh, maybe play the first base game before adding any of this stuff. The head house made, the useful man, all of this. But I will be adding it because I will be playing it. <laughs> Let's see here. We've got Alderly Hall and the other side, which also has Alderly Hall, but this one has like a tableau round track. It's got the solo estate challenge and on the back theme cards, victory point cards. Okay. This looks like the normal board, but this looks like you would use it for the solo game. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right. We've got the country estate improvements, essentials, service, estate, prestige, and sporting that you can add to the country estate. We've got another player board, double-sided again. The family bonus at the bottom, begin the game with a cook, that sort of thing, for the Howard clan, Howard family, 
they're not really clans, I guess. All right, Builder's Market Reserve. So, after Season 2, move all PR tiles, PR1 tiles, to this location. All future PR1 tiles are placed here. Prestige rating of 1. After Season 1, move all service tiles to this location. All future service tiles are placed here. And then we've got some more punch boards to look through in the expansion. We've got some tokens. So, of course, you'll need tokens to be able to mark your uh, reputation. And it goes all the way up to 10. And, of course, 1 is the lowest. We've got various uh, house sigils here. And we've got reminder tokens. We've got all these new tiles to look through. And they're about to punch out, so I'm going to be very careful on uh, trying to make sure they don't all just fall right out of their punch board. Here we've got one more board that has essentially the same stuff here on the outside, but some newer tiles here in the middle that don't match the ones we just looked at. All right. Very cool. All right, that is everything in the expansion box of Upstairs Downstairs. So I'm just going to carefully just kind of set it back in here. Probably along with all the promo stuff we've already looked at. And leave it in here until we can get through the base game stuff. All right. Very cool. Looks cool. Looks fun. On to the main base game of Obsession. All right, let's read the back first. Uh, our story changes are afoot in Derbyshire, England, where four families, all possessed of eligible young gentlemen and ladies, find themselves embroiled in romance and intrigue during a time of optimism. Fortune has recently smiled on these somewhat neglected estates, families with respectable histories that endured hard times in the late 18th century. Now in the mid-19th century, the families Asquith, Cavendish, Ponsonby, and York have coincidentally come into new sources of income and are intent on improving their country estates and restoring their failing reputations. The inflow of funds is modest, but there is a new optimism abroad in southern Derbyshire. The envy of this part of the country or county is Alderley Hall, where Margaret Dowager Countess Fairchild and her sister-in-law Ethel, or Ethel, reside with a joint income well in excess of twenty thousand pounds. Only their loneliness living on such a sprawling estate dampens the generous hearts of the two widowed and childless ladies. Then, to their delight, they welcome new occupants, the dowager's dashing nephew Charles and lovely niece Elizabeth, sadly not far removed from tragedy. Their parents, returning from holiday in the south of France, perished crossing the channel in suddenly ill weather. The death of Margaret's brother-in-law and his lady has brought Charles and Elizabeth permanently to the Fairchild residence, far from their childhood estate in Yorkshire. Of course, the irrepressible Fair, Fairchild sisters, a year now removed from the terrible accident, know precisely what is the best medicine for a sad heart, romance. And the surrounding hills are awash in prime matchmaking material. The nearby Derbyshire families all have marriageable children, and the Fairchild ladies have designs. All right. Let's see if I can carefully open... All right, for one to four players, 30 to 90 minutes, ages 14 and up. Let's take a look. 2.2 second edition, 2.2. All right, so the most current uh, rule book. It's quite large. Uh, but very fully illustrated, lots of detail, looks pretty good, just read it front to back, should be good. In-game scoring, okay, here we go, that answers the solitaire question, yes, you can play it solo, straight out of the box. We have a glossary, so, let's see, uh, detailed thematic and technical explanations for all terms in the rulebook. Um, so you can quickly reference everything that you might need to know during the game. So instead of trying to search the rule book, they have a nice little glossary appendix. We have some more victory points or um, score pads. 
of course, just like how the expansion offered. Um, we've got Howard, a box for Howard. These, I believe, are all going to be empty for now. We have the Wessex box. We have Cavendish. Ta-da. This one is the House of Esquif. Esquif. The House of York. Look at all these. And Polsonby. So how many is that? Six, perhaps up to six players with all these expansions, who knows? Or maybe they're just options to play as with different abilities. I'm not sure. Uh, do these have anything in them? Not quite. This one feels like it has something. Aha. Components. First, we have a large purple bag with obsession on it. Yes, that a good... I believe that's to hold all the tiles that you need to be able to draw out randomly into the game. We have a... What is this? A D20? Yep. There you go. Purple D20. Very nice. Let's see if we can open up the meeples. Take a look here. All these dudes. We've got the purple guys and a purple pawn. We have some more green servant dudes, just like the uh, provided expansion. Some of the red housekeepers, housemaids. We've got more of the octagon markers, and I believe these are butlers. You can see there, Butler. Got markers to track everyone's uh, reputation as it grows. I think these are uh, servants that do catering and food, food stuff. Special workers. Everybody is a special worker. <laughs> they all have their ability and restrictions. We have a bunch of these dudes again, and a white pawn. And the pawn uh, and the other one are both wood, also painted. Okay, set those here. Let's slide this over. Let's put this like that. Inside the box, we've got Let's look at some of the boards. All right, the Country Estate Improvements Board. We've got like two of those. Wait, three, wait, wait, four. Very good, very good. All right, and then we have your four uh, estate starting boards for each family, the Polsondi, York, Cavendish, Esquif. All right, all of these. We have Alderley Hall, which is the base game one. You flip it over, I think it's the same. Just a two-sided board. And then we have the, uh, the folded board, which you can see here. You've got the builder's market, you've got guest cards that go here. You got the tiles for the builder's market that come out higher servants that you can gain, and then some more objective cards that you could gain. All right. So let's set this here and take a look at what else comes in the box. So now let's take a look at some of the cards that come in the game here. And let's see. We'll start with this pack. Carefully open it up and take a look together. Here we go. Bunch of, I think all these purple cards that we're seeing are just kind of uh, reference cards for everything. There's the various obsession cards you can see. Now, from what I'm, uh, from what I'm looking at, 
Every card we're looking and finding in this game is unique. I don't see any repeats, um, which is great because you're getting unique abilities and flavor text and that sort of thing each time you play. Uh, new characters, it's kind of like how Wingspan has a different bird for every card that's unique and there's no repetition. So I think that's really cool. Um, I'm curious too to know like how much uh, of some of the historical context added into the game are you know based on like real people or if it's you know all fictional. Um, either way, I'm, I'm excited to try it. So here's the solo cards, you know, solitaire right there. And we got some more obsession cards right in here for our guests to bring into your estate. All right. These are all same backing. Let's take a look. I believe some of these are the starting cards uh, as seen by the name of the family, the letter in the corner, and um, that sort of thing. Okay. So once again, I'm just going to flip through these quickly like this, and if you want to slow down the video and pause it on one that you want to read, you are welcome to do that. Um, but they each have various amounts of, you know, either reputation advancements or let you draw new cards or give you money, that kind of thing. Some of them cost you money. Some of them cost you reputation, as you can see. Some of them give you points. Some of them lose you points. Very interesting. Like the gossip right here. Minus four points. Okay. There's those. Uh, and then these are the purple cards that we saw. So servant icons. So there's a lot of references. Passing flowchart. So stuff that you do when you pass the game or pass on your turn. There's a number of things to handle uh, in a specific order. There's special actions that you can do using like reputation and moving it backwards and stuff like that. You got tile and card icons. So always a lot of references. And the seasonal flowchart, you know, what happens with that and how to dismiss guests. I'm curious if there's like a one page that all of this information could go on instead of having like five different cards that has, you know, breakdowns of all of that. Um, I don't know. Now look at this. This is very cute. This is like the tiniest deck of cards I've seen probably in forever or a long time. <laughs> this is like so, so small. My God. Maybe the expansion is meant to uh, replace these with just bigger cards because this appears to just be the same exact type of deal as what we just saw. <laughs> I just dropped them all. Um, but as you can see, it's so small, like you're just so easily going to drop these things. Um, I understand that, you know, with the card being a kind of a quick, quick use, you don't need a big size for the information that's needed on here. But at the same time, I can see the functionality of people with big hands, man. Like, I, I can't really shuffle or really uh, handle them too well without flipping them and dropping them all over the place. So I'm pretty sure that the, the one expansion that we just saw there with the larger victory point cards is just meant to replace that, which is fine. That's fine. Um, the quality of the card's fine. It's just, they're just small. I mean, what can you say? Here we've got more objective cards and these look actually kind of the same as the other ones that we saw in the expansion. And I wonder if these are also supposed to be replaced with the expansion ones or if uh, added to them I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we've got a bunch of cardboard uh, punch-out boards, as as noted, because majority of this game is getting these tiles, and you got these uh, discs to help you track your reputation, and you've got money. You're going to need money, so you're going to find a lot of money to punch out. 
cardboard money. Okay. So don't see a denomination value on the on the money tokens. That's okay. We'll figure it out. Probably ones and fives, honestly. We've got uh, different types of buildings indicated by their color, and uh, I suppose also by the name at the bottom, maybe. Um, okay. And there's the back. And there's these. A lot of the purple ones. Monuments are unique. You can see like actual pictures on them. The largest wine cellar. What are we doing? Viticulture? <laughs> uh, the big game trophy room. That's a fun monument. Okay. And there you go. So that's everything that's included. There's going to be a lot of sorting that's going to have to take place to put all the uh, components in their rightful boxes and uh, get set up and ready to play. Um, but you know, this is a this is going to be a lot of fun. I know it's a, a unique kind of euro, um, so there's going to be a little bit of uh, time to study this rule book and and test it out before I can get it to the table with full four players and whatnot. Um, but it's going to be good, and I may I may even be able to do a tutorial on this one. Uh, so we'll see what the demand is like and uh, if we have a lot of response to obsession and needing a tutorial. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, I'll be working on that and uh, be sorting these sleeving cards as I normally do. But hey, you know, this has been an unboxing of Obsession. Thank you so much for checking out the channel and watching the video. If you liked it, leave me a like, comment, let me know what you thought. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more content on the channel. Uh, we do tutorials fully in depth uh, twice a month. We have a podcast. We have news every other Friday and plenty more. So stick around. Until next time, I've been Jared. See ya.